you're watching the Super Bowl and you see an ad for a prescription drug, we've all seen them. The beginning paints an optimistic picture of the drug's incredible curing capabilities, followed by a lengthy list of side effects ranging from dizziness to death. <laughs> when someone takes a prescription drug, they're also taking a potentially fatal gamble. With over 70% of Americans on at least one prescription, variable responses to medication are a huge problem. Adverse drug events are responsible for approximately 50% of all annual 5% of all annual hospitalizations and are the fourth leading cause of death in the US. Adverse drug events are responsible for approximately 1.5 million annual hospitalizations. That's 3% of all annual hospitalizations, meaning that every minute, three people are hospitalized with an adverse drug reaction. Why might a drug cure one person but poison another? I decided to pursue a project in bioinformatics, the science of analyzing genetic data to explore this question. I hypothesized that a person's response to a drug is influenced by their genome or all their DNA. To develop my idea, I thought about DNA and how drugs work. What do genetics have to do with a drug's response? Once ingested, the digestive system breaks down a drug into molecules that flow through the bloodstream. A person responds to a drug when drug molecules bind to body molecules and trigger a certain response. This response procedure is known as a cell signaling pathway. Cell signaling pathways are like lock and key mechanisms, where the part of the drug molecule is the key that fits into part of the body molecule. When molecules bind together, they unlock the door to a physical response to a drug by sending a signal to the body. Chemicals in the body called enzymes speed up the reactions between drug molecules and body molecules and can therefore affect the cell signaling pathway. DNA contains the instructions for the body to produce enzymes. Enzymes are made of proteins, and your unique set of proteins is what makes you you. Mutations or changes in the DNA code could change what proteins and enzymes are produced. Therefore, a change in the enzyme could change a signal that the drug sends to the body. So enzymes may be and mutations may be responsible for side effects. When I read about genome sequencing, I thought, wow, what if there's a way to analyze a genome to find a mutation? Then there might be a way to correlate these mutations to side effects. I researched mutations in enzymes critical to the absorption of drugs Lipitor, Plavix, and Tegretol. I focused on these drugs because they have been well studied. Using public databases, I found mutations linked to drug inefficacy and side effects such as excessive bleeding for Lipitor, Plavix, and Tegretol. However, knowing the mutation only solves half the problem. DNA code is composed of building blocks known as bases. These bases are like the alphabet of the DNA code for proteins. To know if there is an abnormal mutation in this DNA code, doctors need to search the whole genome. That's six billion bases long. When I saw this challenge, I added to my hypothesis and predicted that I could innovate a computer algorithm or problem-solving procedure to find a mutation. This sparked my next idea. I could innovate a string searching algorithm. 
String searching algorithms are computer programs that find a string of letters in a text. The genome is the text, and the mutation is the string. How will string searching algorithms save lives? These algorithms can find mutations, allowing doctors to search a database for mutations, compare them with ones known to cause side effects, and prescribe a possibly life-saving drug. My innovation is a string searching algorithm that finds mutations linked to drug responses. This can help solve the problem of variable responses to prescription drugs. I created design criteria for my innovation. It needs to be functional, feasible, and fast. Why is there a need for speed? A fast algorithm could be life-saving in emergency situations, such as seizure or allergic shock, when the correct drug must be prescribed immediately. To address this need, I tested several algorithms and narrowed it down to two, Apostolico John Carlo and Reverse Factor. String searching algorithms in general work to find a pattern P within a text T. Apostolico John Carlo uses an efficient algorithm to store characters and find a match. Instead of comparing every character in pattern P with every character in text T, resulting in time-consuming operations, Apostolico John Carlo can skip mismatched alignments when a match is not found. Reverse factor is faster because it uses a similar method to Apostolico John Carlo, but stores data more efficiently through a type of array that allows the computer to quickly access data values from memory. However, I knew that the existing algorithms couldn't find a mutation fast enough. So I innovated parallel versions of them. A parallel program can run on multiple computer processors. How does parallelism make an algorithm faster? A parallel program can run on multiple computer processors. Parallel computing is like weaving a rug, where the rug is the task, or searching the genome, and the workers are the processors. If one worker does the job, it could take that worker a month. But if 10 workers do the job, the rug would only take a few days to finish. In a nutshell, parallelism makes processors work together reducing the runtime. I found that parallelizing the algorithms with four processors accelerated each sequential one by 400%. Parallel reverse factor was double the speed of parallel Apostolico John Carlo, accelerating the original algorithm by 800%. Though I obtained my results in milliseconds, with an 800,000 base excerpt from chromosome 1, each algorithm would take hours to run using a whole genome. The human genome is 6 billion bases long, making an algorithm take 7,500 times longer to run than in my experiments. Doctors would run an algorithm to search for multiple mutations in the whole genome, which could take several hours. This might be too late for patients in emergency situations. Therefore, an accelerated algorithm like mine will help save lives by allowing doctors to quickly predict a patient's response to a drug. I became a finalist in the Discovery 3M Young Scientist Challenge for this research. I was able to develop my innovation through a summer mentorship with 3M scientist John Henderson. Industry leader and medication risk management software company Tabula Raza Healthcare invited me to present at their headquarters. Though my algorithm was effective, I thought I could improve the feasibility 
since the procedure for hospitals to access genomes is still not firmly established. Now the good news is, genome sequencing is becoming more widespread and less expensive to obtain. Some hospitals are already sequencing every newborn's genomes demonstrating the increasing feasibility of personalized medicine. However, accessing genomes and translating complex medical tests into a single prescription remains a challenge. I created a prototype of a graphical user interface that shows how I envision using my innovation to help doctors access genomes. It shows how I envision using my parallel reverse factor algorithm and medication risk management software to help save lives. Now I'm going to show you my prototype. My proposed prototype would allow doctors to access genomes, find mutations, and then link them to drug responses. Imagine a patient collapses with a seizure the patient needs a drug right away. The doctor enters the patient's diagnosis, candidate drugs, and sequence genome. The doctor then runs my parallel reverse factor algorithm to gain information about a potential prescription. In the time of this eight minute talk, 24 people were hospitalized with an adverse drug reaction. My innovation has the potential to reduce these hospitalizations and improve health by advancing the field of personalized medicine. I envision a future where treatment is tailored to one's individual genome, where someone can take a drug and not just hope for, but expect a positive outcome. Bioinformatics research similar to mine can soon transform this vision into reality by allowing doctors to make the pill fit the ill. Thank you. Thank you.